In yesterday's video, I discussed Bernie Sanders' claim that July was the hottest month ever in the history of the planet. And he came up with this idea based on some propaganda from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The actual temperature anomaly in July was a very small 0.2 degrees Celsius, making July one of the coolest Julys in the last 600 million years. The coffee crop in Brazil froze in the record cold, and South Africa has been experiencing record cold and snow. Antarctic sea ice extent is well above average and one of the highest years on record. Temperatures at the North Pole were below normal every single day in July. So let's take a look at some of the ways which the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is misleading the public. This is their map showing locations where they have daily temperature data from 100 years ago. The vast majority of their data is from the United States. They have some in Europe, some in Australia, and a few other places around the world. But the vast majority of the planet has no coverage. The only way to evaluate the quality of historical temperature data is by looking at the individual daily temperatures. And this map shows all of the daily temperature data which NOAA has from 100 years ago. Since almost all of their high quality data is from the United States, let's take a close look at the U.S. data over the last century or so. Afternoon temperatures during July in the United States were well below average since 1895. July afternoon temperatures this year were about 5 degrees cooler than 1936, 1901, and 1934. The percentage of the United States to reach 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius during July was close to the lowest on record, way down from 90 years ago. Most of NOAA's high quality long-term temperature data is from the United States and July of this year was one of the least hot on record in the United States. So we might ask, how did NOAA turn one of the least hot Julys since the 19th century into the hottest July in the history of the planet? Part of the explanation is that they tamper with data. This graph shows NOAA's July measured thermometer data for the United States. This was 2021. Once again, the hottest years were 1936, 1901, and 1934. But NOAA tampers with the temperature data to turn this slight cooling trend into a warming trend. They cool the past by more than one degree and warm recent temperatures by about half a degree. Remember that July 1901 was second hottest on record in the United States before NOAA tampered with the data. They reduced the 1901 July temperature data by almost 1.5 degrees below what the thermometers actually measured. But NOAA can't tamper with newspaper archives. This was the front page of the New York Times on July 1st, 1901. The city of Furnace virtually deserted. July 2nd, 1901, heats Holocaust in the five boroughs. 87 deaths and 178 prostrations mark hottest July 1st on record. July 3rd, 1901, heat brings death to over 200 persons. Several hundred others collapse in stifling atmosphere. July 4th, 1901, 200 more dead before rain falls. NOAA can tamper with temperature data to cool the past, but it won't bring the people who died from the heat in 1901 back to life. And the heat wave in 1901 wasn't just in the United States. Many people were dying from the heat in London. Temperatures in England were close to 100 degrees in the shade. The heat wave continued into August. Unprecedented heat in Italy, 43 degrees Celsius or 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Ten years later in 1911, there was another incredibly hot July. A July 1911 heat wave killed thousands of New Englanders and sent many over the brink of madness. Many official New England temperature records were set during the July 1911 heat wave. July 4th, 1911 was the hottest July 4th on record in the United States. The Boston Globe reported 100 degree temperatures all over New England, including 112 degrees in Maine and 110 degrees in New Hampshire. Paris had a 70-day-long heat wave in 1911, which killed more than 40,000 people. London reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the heat wave of 1911. 
And more than 1,000 people died from the heat in Germany during the summer of 1911. The hottest July in the United States occurred 85 years ago in 1936. It was reported that 12,000 people died in the U.S. from the heat in just one week. Andy Weiss was one of the leading historical weather experts in the country before he passed away several years ago. I had the good pleasure of getting to know Andy. He was also a champion long drive golfer at one point in his life. He told me that Saginaw, Michigan had an entire week where they averaged 106 degrees Fahrenheit during July 1936, getting up to 111 degrees. They have seldom gotten up to 95 degrees over the last 25 years. Chicago Midway Airport had nine straight 100 degree days with a high of 109 degrees during the same 1936 heat wave. Heat like that now is completely incomprehensible to Chicago residents. This was the U.S. Weather Bureau temperature anomaly map for the United States during July 1936. Temperatures in the central part of the country were an incredible 12 degrees above normal. July 1936 was the hottest on record in the United States, and this year was below average. Noah's claim that July was the hottest month on record is complete nonsense. There is no legitimate evidence to back up their claim. But there's nothing new about this sort of climate fraud. Here's an article from 150 years ago. Imaginary changes of climate. Every season is sure to be extraordinary. Almost every month, one of the driest or wettest or windiest, coldest or hottest ever known. Much observation, which ought to correct a tendency to exaggerate, seems in some minds to have rather a tendency to increase it. But the propaganda works with people like Bernie Sanders. He imagines that he represents science when in fact he's just another useful idiot.